back everyone, Marcelo is my name, the Niche Fragrance Collector. I'm in the Exxons, 2023. We are in the Paris Monte Carlo booth here at Exxons. This is a huge privilege, by the way, because there was a lot of work that had to go into allowing this to occur, this just didn't happen. We are here before the, the fair opens. We're getting close to opening time, so you'll, you may hear a little bit more noise in mm -hmm. the conversation that we're about to have. The fair has been really good, yeah? Yep, Exxons itself. Super good. Super good. The energy here is something, it's palatable. You can feel it in the air. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One thing that you can detect in the air is perfume. There's perfume everywhere. Oh yeah. Would oh, you yeah. believe for three days I have not worn a perfume? Yeah, I can easily understand you. <laughs> I have not worn a perfume. Yeah. And only because I'm immersed in perfume. I'm immersed in these smells yeah. as I walk through. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. been joyful. For me, it's been joyful. What do, you, what do you do, Carlos? I'll take care of the international division of the uh, Paris group. Okay. Uh, so Paris Monte Carlo is one of the brands we have in the group. Uh, yeah, I'm looking after the, uh, the international edition. The last episode, we covered five from the different collections. As you can see, it's very vast. Carlos is gonna navigate us through again. The floor is yours. Okay, you've been discovering uh, things from the, uh, from the collections. We will start this, this new episode once again, starting from the Italy collection. Yep. Uh, as we said before, tribute to the uh, precious raw materials coming from, uh, from Italy. Uh, in this case, particularly, we are talking about citrusy notes. And this one that I'm going to show you is one of the latest launches we have in this collection. Actually, we presented last year. It's Neroli. I love this one. Okay. Uh, quality of this one is coming again from the south, from the, uh, re uh, from the region of Reggio Calabria. Let me tell you what this fragrance yeah. is called. In my home, this is called You're Welcome. Mm -hmm. Nice. I, li I like this definition. You need to ask me why. Why? <laughs> so my wife Sandra loves wearing this fragrance. Okay. When she goes out for a walk, this is her choice because the sillage of this is divine. Mm -hmm. And as she walks past people, she says, you're welcome. This beautiful Mediterranean neroli sillage that this yeah, produces. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's, it's a very clear sign of good vibe. Optimistic, you know, yes. it's clear, it's bright. It's, it uh, it's sunshine. Yeah. If you could define this, this is a bright sunshine morning, blue sky, brisk cleanness in the air. Yeah. On the last episode, we talked about uh, how citrus fragrances have a smaller molecule mm -hmm. regardless of the oil. So, and regardless of the concentration, it's a smaller molecule. So it doesn't last as long as a wood or anything of that nature. But I feel that because it does have woody notes in the base, mm -hmm. the, the longevity of this fragrance is really impressive. It it's is really... Su it's super good. The concentration we're using in this collection is, is really very massive. I mean, it's super, super heavy concentrated. Right. So the interpretation is fantastic. Yeah. Still not only uh, being extracted by steam distillation. Right. Uh, so you know the bearded orange is one of the most precious uh, raw materials we have in the industry because it's giving us raw materials from the fruit, from the flowers, from the, uh, from the wood. Material. Super generous. Now we jump again to the Le Parfum de Grasse collection. In this part, the south of France, even this part uh, in Italy, this is a very typical thing. In it's France, historical now. yes, in France, that plant was brought by the Romans. Right. That is why we call this one Lavanda Romaine. This is a fragrance which is basically fulfilling your expectations. Yeah. For me, it's absolutely honest to, uh, to the uh, raw material itself, yeah. you see? And the interpretation of this one, I mean, coming from Jean-Claude Elena, uh, it really reflects the uniqueness yeah. of, the, uh, of the material. Yeah. So I think there's, there's no mystery in that. Uh, to me, sometimes in, in, in our collection, the minute I came to know about the name, I mean, it's what I'm expecting. Right. It's a pure lavender. On the opening, it's that very bright. It is. Sort of lavender aromatic. Yeah. White flowers. Yeah, oh, white flowers. I'm a beekeeper. I, I have a beehive. Mm -hmm. And I plant lavender for my bees. It has good essential oils for healthy bees. So I have a lot of lavender around. And I love grabbing the, the stem of the lavender and doing this. Oh, yeah. Be and I don't pick it. I just wipe and yeah. get the oils. And get the oils. And smell my Fantastic. Th and it's, I, loved, I love doing this is, that This as is well. that. Yeah. yeah. It's that reality, the realistic. That is why I'm, I'm telling you, I, I do find this one absolutely genuine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd be curious to see the dry down, the evolution of this. I can see that this would be awesome for layering. Mm -hmm. So you could add other components to this. But if you want a good classic lavender fragrance, 
This is it. This is it. Another super, super interesting composition. This is a tribute to the tuberos. The quality of this material, uh, it's coming from Central America. Right. Very popular in Mexico, for example. White flower. Stunning. Uh, nowadays, we have very good quality also in Egypt, Morocco. Uh, the north of the Mediterranean, the north of Africa in the Mediterranean area. This is another name of elegance, so to speak. I mean, it's a... Uh... Tuberose, I find, is such a beautiful, uh, feminine-leaning yeah, fragrance note. Yeah, it is. Note. I, again, similar to that Ylang Ylang, mm -hmm. it is very sensual. Mm -hmm. It's a very sophisticated yeah, fragrance. Yeah. I mean, this is, for me, very well-dressed, very... I think I'm picturing my wife because this is a fragrance that she loves to wear. Mm -hmm. So this is a going out fragrance for, yeah. for her. Very sublime, very feminine. Yeah, it is. And very true to tuberose. Yes, it is. So we had a catch up with a perfumer called Luca Maffei. And I asked him the question, what's easier for him when he creates a fragrance? Because he's created a few fragrances for the Paris Monte Carlo. Is it easier to create a fragrance based on an, uh, a moment, like a night in Paris, or is it easy to create a fragrance to represent a note? Mm -hmm. His response was, it's, it's, actually, it's actually harder to do this because nature tells you this is what a tuberose smells like, and yet he, they have to reconstruct what nature gives you in a way that the fragrance will evolve because it has a top heart and base note. So it's not just tuberose, there's other components to it. Exactly. So, but this is a very realistic it is. tuberose. It is. If you were to grab it in nature, similar to the lavender, if you were to grab it in nature and smell that or smell this, there is a, a very clear line between the two. Back to the gold collection. Let's talk about pillars. A very, very ancient raw material being used in perfumery. This one, nowadays, this is very important to get everyone clear on this. There's not any natural material in this. Right. Everything is synthetic. So this is ambergris. This is ambergris, okay. Super rounded, warmy. Yes, ambery. Yeah been a synthetic ingredient right now, of course, it, it doesn't have this, this animalic no. side of the, uh, no. of, the, uh, of the face. It's super embracing, right? I was going to say, it? it's a very warm fragrance. Yeah, this it is, is. This is perfect as a, a winter, a cooler month kind of fragrance. Yeah. We said it before, talking about Bois de Oud, that collection will give you a lot of opportunity when it comes to layering. Right. So this is definitely, for example, my favorite collections when it comes to do the layers, and this one is one of the top Top, top base notes. So when you layer the, the ambergris, yeah. what, what would you do? So you would put the ambergris first, and, amber, and then what would you support it with? Particularly, I'm, I'm combining it very easily with all the Italy collection. I'm gonna uh, do it right now. You're going to give me a recommendation, yes, and I'm going to do it. So ambergris on first. Let me just experience it first. So very similar, warm, a little bit spicy. A little bit. I, yeah, detected like a little bit of, but not 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 like a, like a like a pink pepper or a sauce. Yes, in there. it has a spicy note in there. Yeah, nice. Try to put mandarino de chili on top, which I love on its own. Okay, so now I'm creating my own fragrance. I love it. Right now I'm getting the mandarin, that, uh -huh. very, that very bright, fruity, green, and but the ambergris coming through the warmth of the amber. Awesome. The beautiful thing that I love about Paris Monte Carlo, they respect the note. And now it allows you to improvise. It would be awesome to have a collection like this mm -hmm. in your house, you know, have it displayed like this. And now you can start creating every day. You could create a different fragrance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put on a heavier molecule on the base, something from black, That's it. something from gold and then layer it on top with a citrus or even a floral. We have one more, which is our brand new thing. We're gonna be touching base once again on the extra version of the Vanille de Tahiti. Yes. This one, one of the key things in here is basically that we are not using the more gourmand facet of the uh, vanilla. Right. You know, uh, be, because we've been talking about this before, between the EDPs and the extract, there are always some very little twists in the formulation. Yep. Now I'll put you in a very nice challenge. You okay. have to tell me oh. if you identify clearly. If there's the emoji, it's the one with the sweat going. What is, what is the twist in the oh, top now? No. Let me see if you I've can. I've never smelled this before. Okay, so now I'm really being... It's absolutely discovery, you know, live thing. Well, the vanilla is coming through. 
Okay. All right. So it's very soft. It is not going on like you said. The quality on this on this raw material is absolutely outstanding. We are talking about absolute the vanilla that it is CO2 critical. It's so it's fantastic. I'm too scared to say anything. Some and, things are coming to and my you, mind. And you guess the, the the top note, which is making this little twist on the old formulation. Can you identify some flower in there okay. or not? All right, okay. I, I don't want him to feed me lines. All right. I want, I'm gonna. This is this is now. I'm not gonna edit this out either. All right. So if I get it wrong, I get it wrong. Okay. Okay. So my my brain went floral. Floral. Okay. Yes. So you're in the right direction. Yeah. So I, I. So but now now this is now I'm walking off the edge. All right. Okay. And I'm not a perfumer. All right. So let me qualify this. <laughs> As I get this wrong, I'm not either. So let's. Uh, we are playing. Love man. <laughs> I just love perfume. Okay. We play jazz. We play Come jazz. On. I love playing jazz. <laughs> it's not that common, huh? I yeah. have to say. It's okay. a big challenge I put you through. It is white floral. I am detecting it. All right, I need it on skin. May I have it on skin, sir? Yes. Okay, I go back. The vanilla is pure. Absolutely. The vanilla but, is the... No, but not that sweet. No. You perceive that? Not come on. Not it is not on. at all. The vanilla is pure. It's out of this vanilla thing, so it's more that rounded. The floral is there. May I say? Yes, please. This is Magnolia. Okay. I'm not familiar with Magnolia, but yeah. that's okay. That's, that's okay. why. It's a little, very okay. little twist on this, but it's death. It's but it's, it's but it's there. It's detected. If you smell the EDP on the extra, you will notice clearly. Okay, Magnolia has a slight animalic. Am I yes, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. So now I'm getting that slight animalic. Yeah. Maybe it's Inception. Maybe it, you know Carlos planted this in my brain. <laughs> but the, the funny thing is, the vanilla is pure. But I think now I'm getting that that white floral animalic. And, and the two are coming together. Yeah. I realize I'm still on the top note, so I'm still on that opening of the fragrance. Mm -hmm. If you like vanilla, this is not what you think it might be. Sometimes I find when I see a fragrance come out, not that it's predictable, all right? So I'm not saying that, but I'm, I am aware of it. I'm familiar. Already I'm like, okay, I think it's going to be this, that's already my brain's going, it's going to be a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of boom. But you know, at the end of the day, Marcelo, there's there's nothing wrong with being predictable. I mean, we've talking about mm. lavanda and I was sure. telling you, yeah. this is what you are expecting. I mean, sure. I'm telling and you, this is you lavanda get. and this is what you're expecting. Yeah, yeah. In this, there's there's a bunch of new things coming out and that's that's nice too, huh? But what I'm saying here, yeah. yes, I agree. This is not predictable. It is I not. know that it's vanilla. I know it because that's what it, it, it's telling me. But the but way it evolves is yep. completely different. Yep. It's, it's bringing you to different places. Uh, vanilla fragrance is, is something that I love wearing more in cooler months, but I could wear this in a, a summery, oh, yes. not a hot summer, yep. but I, on a warmer day, definitely. On a spring day, 100%. On a hot evening, 100%. This is a going out fragrance would be magic. So I see this as an all year round. Yes. An all year round perfume. Yep. I was not aware of your extract uh, versions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I'm very familiar with the EDPs, the black collection, but I, I knew that you had the extract yep. to support some of the blacks, but I've never sprayed them. Really impressive. Yep. And they're different to the EDP. Yes, they are. And you know, the funny game on this is basically, and once we are doing uh, training sessions with uh, you know, salespeople around the globe, what we are basically doing is trying to play around the EDPs and the extracts in order to fill the difference, to fill the difference on the quality and the formulations. Absolutely. Because there are always, you know, little twists here and there that makes the things more, more funny. And by the way, we are never launching the EDP together with the extra version. Yeah, I noticed okay? that. So we are taking some time to do this. this I noticed this. each one is a unique fragrance. It, it may have a similar name, but it's, it's its own expression. Yeah. You have an exceptional collection. If you're not familiar with anything from Paris Monte Carlo, I'd strongly recommend go test on skin. The, the layering that we did with ambergris, with the mandarin. So I have Mandarino de Sicilia. It starts off very fruity. It does go leafy green woody. This is not what's happening here with the ambergris. The ambriness is sort of coming through. The mandarin fruit note is there, but the two of them together is creating a whole new unique scent profile, which is pretty exciting. So easy layering fragrances if you love layering. And the vanilla is a winner in the store. <laughs> I hope you like it. Thank you, sir. Thanks, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you guys all on the next episode.